Watch us on YouTube and Facebook. Listen to our podcast and support us on Patreon. Thanks for stopping by. Robert Hooke came from a family that was mostly church leaders, and he was not rich by any means. Everything that Hook had in life he earned, except for an inheritance that he received when his father died. Hook applied that inheritance towards furthering his education, buying an apprenticeship as a watchmaker and limner. After gaining an apprenticeship, Hook was able to enter a Westminster school, where he learned Latin, Greek, Euclid's elements, and mechanics. Robert Hook was awarded Master of Arts in 1662 or 1663. Declared Gresham Professor of Geometry in 1664. Released his Microscopy observations in 1665 and was awarded his Doctorate of Physics in 1691. Robert Hooke as a scientist and scholar of his time must not be overlooked, though he wasn't a very popular person. Disliked over disputes over authorship and claims of discovery, between him and other scholars. Disputes with Isaac Newton, concerning his theory of gravitation. An argument also arose with Oldenburg over watch escapement, and then with Christian Huygens too, over the balance spring commonly known as the hairspring. When the Royal Society was formed Hooke was appointed curator of experiments, the first to be appointed the position actually. Because of Hooke's position correspondences to and from other scientists concerning research, also became an issue. Claims were made that he took credit for research that wasn't his. It is hard though to say if Hooke did steal from other scientists. The research was sent to the Royal Society from a lot of different people. It was Hooke's job to experiment and display the findings of that research. The fact that Hooke was educated and knew how to use ciphers, made it appear even more suspicious. He was described as despicable, jealous, and envious by his fellow scholars, claiming that Hooke would take credit for every discovery of the time. A conspiracy was brought to light that concerned a portrait of Hooke, which was displayed while he was alive but disappeared after his death. Some claim that Newton was responsible for the theft but nothing has ever been proven. Claiming that after Hooke's death when Newton became president of the Royal Society, he stole both Hooke's papers and his portrait. The portrait was never found, but the papers were discovered in the 20th century. The portrait was the only image of what Hooke looked like. Hooke's laws of gravitation without any scientific evidence or mathematics to support it, was the closest and earliest observations of the time. Robert Hooke claimed he would produce his evidence, but said that he had other research to be worked on first. Still, he mentioned these observations and laws in two lectures, once in 1664 and then in 1669. While corresponding with Isaac Newton, Hooke announced that he was appointed the new curator of research for the Royal Society. Robert Hooke then asked Isaac Newton what his thoughts were about planetary motions, springiness, and improving the survey. Newton responded by explaining falling objects. How in a terrestrial experiment, when an object falls a person can detect the Earth's motion, by the deviation of the object's vertical fall. He also explained if the Earth wasn't in the way, the object would continue to fall in the direction it was falling. Robert Hooke disagreed, yet when Newton released his first paper in 1686, he claimed that Newton had stolen his ideas. Ideas concerning the rule of decrease of gravity, and the squares of distance from the center. Agreeing though that the curves generated, were all Newton's idea. Isaac Newton proved that the inverse square law was used well before Hook learned of it. Suggesting also that he should be given more credit than Hook, because he produced not only evidence, but the math to prove his theories. He did acknowledge that Hooke was aware of the inverse square law applied to the solar system, and how Hooke's correspondences did reawaken Newton's desire to look at astronomy. Nothing new in his research was developed because of it though. It was finally decided that most scientists of that time were already aware of and using the inverse square law, and for many different reasons. 
It should be mentioned that Isaac Newton was a pioneer in applied mathematics and optics. Kirk was a researcher of observation, with work that was less accurate and having undeveloped findings. Robert Hooke was also involved in rebuilding London, after the Great Fire of 1666. A surveyor and architect, he was accredited with both the construction and design of the Monument to the Fire, Royal Greenwich Observatory, Montague House of Bloomsbury, and Bethlehem Royal Hospital. He designed the Royal College of Physicians, Raggerley Hall, the parish church at Willen in Milton Keynes, and Buckinghamshire. Hook wanted to redesign London streets according to a grid pattern too. Grid patterns were already used in Paris, Liverpool, and a lot of American cities. His suggestion was turned down though, due to property rights. Hook was a chemist, assistant mechanic, and may have been involved in building, operating, and displaying air pumps that were used by Robert Boyle. It has also been suggested that he may have also helped with the math used in Boyle's law. Robert Hooke was interested in improving the balance spring and pendulum used in watches and clocks. Navigating was particularly difficult because of longitude, Hooke wanted to improve this with the balance spring. He felt that he had achieved this with the help of associates, but when he tried to patent the spring Christian Huygens apparently made a patent for his own version first. Hooke's associates claimed he had invented it first, at least 15 years before Huygens. Hooke not only worked on the balance spring and the pendulum, but he also created his own pocket watch with a coil spring too. He even wrote a paper titled, Elasticity, involving linear variation of tension and extension of an elastic spring. It was produced because of Hooke's research while developing the balance spring, or hairspring thus, allowing timepieces to hold time more accurately. The debate over who was the actual inventor would continue for centuries until Hooke's papers were finally rediscovered in the 20th century, showing that Hooke first invented the hairspring. While doing research in watchmaking Hooke began to research astronomy too, studying both gravity and mechanics at the same time. Robert Hooke argued his principle of gravitation in micrographia, during his lecture to the Royal Society in 1666. Adding two more principles, bodies travel straight until deflected by force, and attracting force is greater with closer bodies. Showing that gravitation applies to all bodies, the further away bodies are from each other the more they travel in a straight line. Explaining his observations through microscopes, telescopes and biology, Hook was the one who coined the term cell describing biological organisms. Comparing plant cells to monk cells. In Hook's lecture, he discussed Boyle's observations concerning combustion, explaining how combustion involved the mixing of substances with air. He went on to explain how respiration involved air, and if Hook would have gone any further, he would have eventually discovered oxygen. Hook wrote about his observations, of the attractions of planets and the sun in the solar system. He attempted to measure the distance between Earth and Gamma Draconis, a neighboring star. Robert Hooke wanted to determine how craters were formed on planets and charted star clusters. Being one of the first to observe the rings of Saturn, discovering Gamma Arietis in 1664, Hooke did research concerning the fluidity of gravity and was also pioneering research into capillary actions. This later earned him the position of curator of experiments and placed him as a member on the board of the Royal Society. He experimented with animals to prove that if the thorax was cut, the animal could stay alive by pumping air into the animal's lungs with a pump. Hook also noted the differences between venous and arterial blood. Hook researched petrified wood and amenities, and came to believe that amenities were remains of living creatures, soaked in petrified water, and laden with minerals. He believed that these creatures were long since extinct, which many scientists of his time were against. Robert Hooke would observe nodal patterns associated with modes of vibrations, by running a bow along the edge of a plate covered with powder. Patterns would emerge as he watched the vibrations. Hooke researched memory also, 
proposing in a lecture a mechanistic model of memory. The model consisted of encoded memory, capacity, retrieval, repetition, and memory loss, indicating that memory was a physical entity. This is brought to you by The Praetorian, on both YouTube and Facebook. Listen to our podcast on any of these platforms, Inker, Breaker, Google Podcasts, Overcast, Pocket Casts, Radio Public, Spotify. Support us on Patreon. Check out our Discord server too. All the links are in the description below. Thanks for stopping by. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback.